Keep him at arm's length if you want to keep your possessions and prepare to hear about that damnable woolly mammoth. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about Tasselhoff Burfoot. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel, and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate link. I'm referencing the art of the Dragonlance Saga, the annotated Chronicles and Legends, the Lost Chronicles, Dragons of Summer Flame, and the War of Souls. If I leave anything out that you find defining about Taz, leave a comment below. Tasselhoff Burfoot is a difficult character to nail down, in every sense of the phrase. Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman see him as a peripheral character who plays the role of the fool in the classic sense. We laugh with Taz, not at him. He is innocence incarnate, with no reverence for anything or anybody. The authors had difficulty with his race and his character's need for growth, so the deaths of Flint Fireforge and Nimsh the gnome became moments that changed and defined him. He gained depth and wisdom through the chronicles and legends and grew even more, at times relearning the same lessons over and over again in the War of Souls trilogy. I have always seen Taz like R2-D2. He may get people into trouble, but equally gets them out of it. Arguably, they are the real heroes of the story as they provide direction and possibility to overcome insurmountable odds. Even his appearance dramatically shifted depending on the artist portraying him. Caldwell saw Taz as more impish, Parkinson depicted him as a teenager, and Elmore painted him as both aged and ageless. His personality and even manner of speech were defined primarily by Roger E. Moore in his short story A Stone's Throw Away, which first appeared in Dragon Magazine. This was what Weiss and Hickman called back to, and of course, Janet Pack's dramatic reading of the character in the first public reading of Dragonlance at Gen Con in 1984. It took artists, writers, and performers to truly nail down this character. I can understand why players don't enjoy Kender in their home games, as they can be terrorizing to a party if allowed, but Taz as a character is the audience's in to the story. It's through him we understand what is important or scary, what should and shouldn't be done. It's also through him we get to experience divinity in avatar form. Fizban alone is an old man, with Taz in the mix, he's a funny, bumbling power to be reckoned with that's playing down to the audience. We're introduced to Taz in the same fashion that we would forever know him, by finding an item of magic and being transported or transformed by it. One could argue that this is his sole contribution to the narrative and in writing the Dragonlance campaign itself when it left the rails in the Fifth Age. Taz is known as the hero he is through his interaction with the device of time journeying and ultimately through his sacrifice in the Chaos War. His best friend Flint Fireforge was more aggravated with his behavior than arguably anyone else, and even he waited in death to be reunited with him, much to Reorks' consternation as it was at his forge under a tree that Flint waited. Some of the most impactful moments of the saga were experienced through Taz directly, from Flint to Sturm, Nimsh, Racelands, Kryn, Chaos, Karaman, Lord Soth, etc. Taz was always worried when he felt that strange feeling in his stomach, known as fear to everyone else, and his ability to crack jokes at the most important moments, <laughs> also the least opportune. As mentioned earlier, we first met Taz as he was transported into Magus' tower, who was making a pact with a demon. It wasn't long after he handled a bracelet from Flint, which started a whole chain of events and led to his first adventure with Tannis and Flint. It wasn't long after that he was turned into a minotaur and saved his companions. The, the companions would become embroiled in the War of the Lance, and if it weren't for Taz and the Glasses of True Seeing, Flint would never have won the Hammer of Karis, and Garrett Crownguard would never have learned about the Dragon Orb. He saw his own death through the shared nightmare in Sylvanistein would journey with Fizzband all through Pax Tharkaz, the Tomb of Huma, and Southern Ergoth with a Dragonlance. He'd echo our collective frustration with the Whitestone Council and destroy the Dragon Orb they fought so desperately for and lost two Knights of Salamnia claiming. Taz couldn't help his insatiable curiosity, 
which was as much a detriment to himself as anyone else. And we witnessed an incredible amount of introspection with him all through the Summer of Chaos and the War of Souls. He knew who he was, but not why he acted the way he did, only that it was natural. He never fully understood why other races made life so difficult for themselves and others on the macro scale. Ironically, all the while he was doing the very same thing on the micro scale. We experienced true joy when he flew on the dragon Kearsaw's back, accidentally capturing Bacchus and piloting a flying citadel upside down at times and abandoned it in a lord's backyard. <laughs> he was instrumental in stopping Raceland from destroying the world and then allowing Raceland to find it again. He has had personal encounters with Paladine, Tachesis, and Chaos, to name a few, and is beloved by the residents of Solace and Kender worldwide. Recounting every event Taz experienced is far too tall a task for any 10-minute video, but this is not what's special about the character. Tasseloff loved maps his entire life. His collection featured both pre- and post-cataclysm maps, and his favorite artifacts included the Knife Rabbit Slayer <laughs> and the Kender Spoon of Turning. His fearlessness provides incredible opportunities for humor, and his insistence on being involved with every situation, because his friends would get into trouble without him, is in itself hilarious. This is a point I think worth reiterating. Tasselhoff Burfoot was a great friend. He actually cared about his friend's feelings and went out of his way to help, even when he wasn't any help. <laughs> he tried in spite of himself. That endeared him to the audience and made him a fan favorite worldwide. If I had any problem with Taz, it's one I alluded to at the beginning of this episode. He would seemingly learn and relearn the same lessons over and over again. You can argue that it's simply him being a kender, but I would counter with the idea that it's just lazy writing. He knew what fear felt like with Kisanth, yet had to relearn it through three trilogies? Each time he didn't understand it. Then, in the War of Souls, he felt Berylinthronox's dragon fear, and that changed him? Not the War of the Lance, not traveling through time and interacting with Lord Soth or Tachesis, not facing chaos itself, but Beryl. I don't buy it. It began to get tedious. We'd be shown how much he cares for his friends and that he was willing to die for them, then, in the War of Souls, he refuses to do that very same thing. Again. Chalk it up to whatever you want. The fact is, it's inconsistent with a character that is integral to the saga. I wonder how he's going to be treated or portrayed in the upcoming Dragons of Deceit. We have to recall that the working title was Tasselhoff's Wife, so we know he is important to the overall story in some way. Now this will be Tasseloff after Legends, but before the Summer of Chaos, so he's seen some crazy stuff, traveled through time, and is, by all accounts, free of conflict and expectation. Let's hope he will remember the lessons he's already learned. But that is all the time I have to talk about Tasselhoff Burfoot. Are you a fan of Kender? Was Taz the true hero of the novels? And finally, if you had the opportunity to meet Taz, would you? <laughs> Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. This channel is all about celebrating the wonderful world of the Dragonlance saga, and I welcome you to join in the celebration. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, I'm not a thief. You know me better than that, Theros. That purse was planted on me.